My name is Laura Mercolini and I'm from the University of Bologna in Italy. I am assistant professor in medicinal chemistry and I coordinate a research group uh, involved in bioanalysis. In particular, it is called PTA Lab, Pharmacotoxicological Analysis Laboratory. My interest in bioanalysis started during my uh, master's degree program uh, in uh, medicinal chemistry and technology. And so basically it started uh, since the beginning of my studies and I realized to love uh, bioanalysis uh, since long time and uh, after the master's degree I continue working in bioanalysis during my PhD program that was a PhD program in pharmaceutical sciences. Uh, my research uh, focuses on uh, bioanalysis, of course, and in particular, uh, the PTA lab, we develop um, methods, original methods, and then we validate them. Uh, it deals with uh, bioanalytical methods, of course, instrumental ones, uh, based on HPLC, mass spectrometry, capillary electrophoresis, and uh, our job aims at uh, developing and validating these uh, new strategies, analytical strategies, uh, involving microsampling, of course. So bioanalysis uh, aiming at uh, analyzing uh, central nervous system drugs, drugs of abuse. And in recent years, we are uh, trying to do some research also in the, in the field of anti-doping analysis. We are an academic research group, so our mission is to, to try to provide some new tools, some new strategies, some new approaches for bioanalysis of small molecules and also some small peptides in recent years. Yes, uh, the paper was an invited paper and uh, we decided to give uh, an overview of uh, this technique, in particular uh, an overview of the state of the art uh, regarding this uh, very recently uh, commercialized device, the VAMS device, um, proposing the applications that are uh, available uh, for the scientific uh, community that are already available in the scientific literature. Uh, focusing on advantages and disadvantages of the, these uh, techniques and in general regarding uh, the challenges and limitations also of microsampling in general because volumetric absorptive microsampling is a, a recent uh, uh, innovation in terms of microsampling. I would say that mm, when uh, we talk about advantages and disadvantages of VAMS, in general we talk about advantages and disadvantages of microsampling and I would say that regarding the advantages uh, uh, collection, transportation and storage of samples is definitely more feasible so the feasibility regarding these steps uh, is a very important aspect is a, a key point of microsampling procedures in general and uh, there is also uh, an interesting discussion regarding stability in the scientific community because it seems that these uh, dried spots, and I'm talking about DMS and also VAMS spots, uh, uh, are able to allow a very good stability of these samples and of the compounds uh, present in these samples. So uh, feasibility regarding collection, transportation, storage, and also very interesting uh, results uh, regarding stability. These are the advantages. Regarding the disadvantages, I think that uh, we should talk about the limitations that are uh, already very well known in the scientific uh, community. And these limitations are related to uh, the fact that basically uh, there are a few applications of uh, VAMS uh, technique uh, at the moment and uh, we should continue working with validation in order to be able to provide sound data to propose this approach as an al alternative uh, or something innovative that uh, has to be studied again. And in general, uh, mm, when we work with microsampling, we have always to compare the new approach, the new miniaturized approach, 
with something that is already recognized, a certified method, an already validated method, something that can be considered a gold standard. So basically, we should uh, have two data sets, and uh, the first one uh, from a classical approach, certified approach, sound approach, and the second data set from a miniaturized innovative strategy. This is the goal, and this is the aim of the research groups that at the moment are working in this field, in the field of microsampling. We have to um, convince, in general, that these approaches can be uh, suitable. Otherwise, we have to admit that there are some limitations still, and there are some limitations still, and we have to study again. Uh, the challenges uh, could be related to method validation. And so basically we have to uh, handle uh, regulations. We have to face uh, with regulations requirements uh, and it is important to be able to um, have sound data regarding precision, accuracy and so on, all the parameters that are included in uh, international guidelines related to uh, method development. So in general, I think that uh, the, main challenges is, uh, the main challenge is to provide sound data in terms of method validation. And moreover, there's the point of automation. Automation is uh, something that can be considered a key point in terms of, uh, of uh, challenges uh, relating, uh, talking about uh, microsampling. And so automation should be uh, at the first place for microsampling, for volumetric sorting microsampling, but in general for miniaturized techniques. And inside a research group, uh, inside uh, an academic group, but in general for everybody in the scientific community uh, working with bioanalysis. Yeah, um, automation in bioanalysis uh, is a crucial point, is a crucial aspect. Uh, we definitely need uh, automation in bioanalysis uh, uh, in order to have sound data, in order to have a reliable analysis and reliable results. I think that automation could help in this sense, and uh, I think that uh, at some point it is definitely required, and uh, there is uh, research to do uh, to be able to use uh, in a very fruitful way the automation.